Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and uh, you're going to watch a video here where I was talking to Ryan Wells. He's an auto hockey guru, automation guru, really, and marketing VP over in, in a lot of Europe. He travels a lot. Anyway, we were uh, we were on a call just chatting, and I said, hey, I had this idea, and I wanted to bounce it off him. It was the whole thing about auto hockey, and it's, is it cheating at work? But after we kind of discussed that, we went in some other things about you know using auto hockey and work and how it can benefit people and how people should view it. So... Um, I thought it was a pretty interesting conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's, it's not too long, but it's uh, pretty fruitful. Ryan's a, a really brilliant guy, and it's really fun talking to other people that, you know, enjoy automation. Cheers. So I was driving with my my family, and we were uh, watching YouTube. And I was watching this channel, which I don't know. how It just kind of naturally came on. I didn't select it. And it's the, this guy who was um, like a gamer was playing a video of this girl who was streaming, you know, her video game. And he's like, now watch real carefully here. Watch this. And you kind of see this little GUI pop up. And he's like, here, this is how I can see how she's cheating, right? She's hacking because this GUI comes up. And and she tries to act like she doesn't know what it is and stuff. But he's like, trust me. Like, look, here it again. Look, she's automating her game. Like, and then she got banned because later, you know, this and that. And the thought occurred to me, it never really occurred to me to approach it this way, but I'm like, I wonder if other, my colleagues at work, like when I used to work at TI, really kind of thought I was quote unquote cheating. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm short circuiting the system because I no longer, it, it, I can get stuff done in a fraction of the time of what they could. Right. And it was like, it, it really gives you this unfair advantage. I'm like, what a great way to position, you know, automation is that you're, you're cheating at work kind of thing. Yeah, it certainly is unfair advantage. That's right. I mean, you can get further faster and then either go home early or achieve a lot more. It's a very powerful way to frame it because people can relate to that. It's a, like a, a sporting competition or something. And you've got, you know, you're starting it with a, a three goal lead or something. Right. Right. So, right. Well, you know what? I, you know, um, it's, it's the, it's the, what is it? The, when they're running, but someone has those, um, the handicap. Yeah. The, those things with the springs, or right? The, yeah. Uh, flip flops. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, 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 they're performing, they're going through the water faster or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah. The fins on the swimming, that's an easier one to, for people. Yeah. To yeah. Right. Well, that's really good. I think that a lot of the time it seems very complicated because we're talking about technology and people don't understand, but when you can write it back to something very practical like that, or even just the clock. You know, imagine having, uh, just as we're doing here side by side, and uh, people do this with things like benchmarking right. tests with technology right. to the computers, side by side, we both have the same tasks to do, and one person yeah. is going to finish a little bit faster than the other. Yeah. And actually, maybe that's a really good way to kind of evangelize this, because you can imagine the two computers side by side, you and I doing the same thing. Right. You're all doing it, quote unquote, manually, or the quote, normal way. <laughs> And if yep. I was using the, the script and we, 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 you know, we have a timer on here, I will have finished. My work will be consistent and perfect. Your work will take longer and it may have a lot of errors. Or I, you might want to catch me up and make more mistakes. Well, I, I was even going to say, you know, and when we look at the screens, I'm watching YouTube videos because mine's being done in the background. I'm not even doing right. it, right? Like, right, but, you're, right, but everything right. else you just said, like you're done quicker. It's more accurate. You know, it's less stressful for me. Or I can focus on, you know, making decisions, you know, and, and not be doing the quote unquote work, right? That the the things that computers are really good at, right? Let the computer. You're do doing the high value work, the decision making, the deciding what to do next, thinking about it strategically, and that, and that sort of the the low value repetitive work, obviously, is being done by the technology. So you, as you say, you uh, make less mistakes and, and have a more efficient way of working and achieve a lot more, a lot faster. So why wouldn't you do it like that? But I think those are very visual tests of these sorts of things bring it home to people. Because in the abstract, in yeah. general, I think people find it hard to relate to. Like, who cares if it takes a couple of seconds? But when you amplify the scale of the work and the work over, right. over time, it becomes a compelling argument and it's not just the time saving it's things like the yeah consistency. The, accuracy is. the computer doesn't get tired you might get tired you might have to go to the restroom oh, or just the, the computer yeah. doesn't stop right the phone rings the, and also the other thing with that is um uh, what's called context switching so you're starting to do right. one thing and then you have to do something else come back it's it's not just a like for like uh, uh switch you lose price like you, it's like when you change direction in the car, you have to slow down and you have to turn left and right, whatever, and it's just been sped up again. This is just continuous flow. 
right? It's it's almost like you're on autopilot when you're driving. You know, you don't have to think about where you're driving. No. I don't have to think, how do I get home? Like, you automatically drive home, but you can be doing other stuff, right? And, mm. and yeah, that's the benefit of having a program. And it's really gratifying. It's really – I think I get a bit of an endorphin rush like that because you you are achieving more by doing less. Or well, you if, do it once, and it's, it's it multiplies. I'm reading this book uh, – it's uh, it's he, he's a copywriter, right, John uh, John uh, Carlton, and uh, it's it's the Entrepreneur's Guide to Getting Your Shit Together, uh, Volume One. But he was talking about it, and he's like, you know, people often forget that like they think everyone, you know, people who've been doing this for twenty years, it's super easy for them, and they don't have to think, you know, it's so simple. He's like, it's always stressful, right? That's part of the thing, but. Only by doing things that are stressful do we start improving ourselves and seeing the benefits. But he says, like, some writers never get started because they realize, hey, if I don't write anything, I can't be critiqued, right? Like, I can't fail if I don't even do it. And I wonder how many people with, you know, programming kind of get stop themselves because it, it, it's painful at the beginning and, and like, oh, man, I don't, I don't know. But it's what he mentions is it's really important to actually get something done because once you've automated something and you see it like, and it works, you're like, Hey, this is awesome. <laughs> right. It's just that. A few, yeah. A few things I would say to that first thing is that I think people often want to solve all the problem all, this, all at once. They want to say, Oh, oh it's your problem. Right. But don't do that. Right. Don't do that. It's, it's fine. You can I don't want to eat the elephant all in one bite. And right, no, right. That, that's not a good plan. You'll and, ch- and- <laughs> And the analogy that I use, if you get 1% better every single oh, right. day, yeah. by the end of the year, you'll be 37 times better. That's an enormous improvement. Crazy. So it's 3,700% better yeah. by just doing 1% better every single day. And that's a really powerful thing to wrap your head around. And the other thing I would say is that, um, and I've done some reading on this this week, is that, and, I, and there's a chap called James Clear I've spoken to you about before, really inspirational guy. And... And you think about successful sports franchises or successful people, and the difference between, uh, let's say, setting a goal and having a system. And uh, so you have an aspiration, a, a, a yeah. huge aspiration to, you know, run a run a marathon or earn a million bucks or whatever. You can't uh, go outside tomorrow and run a marathon. You need to do it incrementally. You need to start and then run a, in a mile, run two miles and three miles and then, you know, build up that um, that that yeah. athletic uh, prowess, whatever. And in the same way with um, with technology, you don't have to solve everything all at once. Just these incremental improvements. Yeah. And the power the power of systems. When you talk to a um, when you see uh, successful sports coaches, like I'm sure Belichick did this, and lots of others, Pat Riley, who coached uh, many years of basketball, they'll talk about. The focus on the next game. It's always the next game and executing the system. Because they know if you consistently do perform high performance, uh, people, companies, whatever, if they consistently perform at a high level and they just focus on that consistency, and that's what our technology can bring us if we have these scripts, they will achieve their goal, right? If you can consistently improve 1% a day, you will be 37 times better by the end of the year. So just it's about consistency, bringing the habituality of you know being being habitual about it, and the technology can help you if you harness this. Those small gains every day, whether it be a, like a text expansion thing or a quick set of hotkeys, even little things like that, trivial things you might think, all of those little things add up, and they and you know it's the whole idea of the old compounding interest that you learn at school. It's a very powerful concept. Yeah, that that was the the compound effect is the that book that that's where. Right. Part of that comes from, right? Yeah, which was a yeah. great book. I was so glad I listened to it. Um, at first, I'm like, "Well, okay, I get the point," but the rest of the book, it it is, it's a brilliant book. It's a it's a really good read. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it's a really important. Like I keep telling people, you should plan at least two days a week to have at least an hour to two hours to learn. You know, work on something and be learning. Right? What maybe it's you know auto hotkey or scripting or whatever, but just something, anything to improve yourself. I, I was realizing the other day, like my use back in undergrad, I started to use styles and word. And that was one of the first times where I really said, I'm going to take some time to learn because we were working in groups and sharing reports and they, they looked Frankenstein, they looked terrible, right? And I'm like, there's got to be a better way to make these things look good. And it was one of those things, like I spent a little time up front, but holy cow, like from my entire college career, 
so everything I did was so much simpler, right, because of it. Yeah, and you don't realize that there's all these things all day, every day that you do that are consistently, um, it can, you do it so often that can be automated, it can be simplified. And even to the extent where I have a little uh, uh, notepad and things that bug me every day. So it might be something trivial like, oh, I have a prompt that comes up on my computer when I boot it up and I don't ever get rid of it. Just get rid of it, fix it. Well, I'll, I'll fix tell you it. That. And then these things add up, right? Here's a simple example of even, like I said, even for me, and I, I've been doing this auto hockey newsletter for, I don't know, I guess a year, roughly, I don't know, a while. And uh, it wasn't until last week when I actually realized this, like I have a script that goes and um, generates my email list, right? Which I'm up to like 6,500 um, subscribers, which is awesome. But I then take that list and I, um, I open my tool for doing the email. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why, why in the world don't I just launch the, the email tool inside the screen? Like, have it go for me. Why, why am I launching that manually? I always take that list. So what I did was I copied the path to the clipboard of my new you know, subscribers and launched the program so I can instantly, you know, it's open and I can just open that, pop in that list for me. And, of course, I could automate the entire process, but – that alone took me a year to just suddenly go, wait a minute, why, you know, why am I doing this? And what does it save me? Probably 15 seconds, but I'm like, you know what? It, I'll take it, right? It's it's awesome. Right, right. And I think for those people who are in business or have employees or whatever as well, if you can build a culture where people are looking to always figure out ways that you can improve, even the most trivial improvements, and you build that culture in, then you're going to make such a transformation well, in your business. Yeah, isn't that like the whole Kaizen kind of, you know, the, Mm-hmm. All the constant improvement, right? Trying to find ways to do yeah. stuff. And Continuous actually, just another time. thing I was going to mention earlier is we were talking a lot about our improvements and improving ourselves. But what with scripting, often we can actually give that, you know, the program to other people who didn't have to put a lick of thought into it. And suddenly they're more efficient as well, right? Which is really a real true power of scripting, right? As programming, it's not just for you necessarily. And that's right. I mean, I think the other thing about that is, is you can use it. I mean, they always talk about um, when you're investing, you know, invest and use other people's money. And in the same way, you've got some sort of other people's knowledge that you can embrace through a forum like the Auto Hockey Forum or the Discord right. chat or people that you talk to or videos that you watch like you. Right. And so you can take their knowledge and you can iterate upon it. You can improve upon it. You can take a library. You can take a script, script snippet. So you can get further faster. That's also a really good technique. And we all do that. We all borrow from each other's knowledge and learn from each other. And um, I think that means also, you know, you don't have to start from ground zero here. You, you're starting from, you know, you're ahead of the game. Someone's probably already done what you want to do or done something similar and you can iterate upon that. It took me several years to realize I was honestly embarrassed. I'm trying to think of a better word because it's not quite it. I felt dirty because I would borrow other people's code and use it. And then I realized that's what programmers do, right? No, fairly few people start from scratch and just write things entirely, right? It's, you're kind of silly if you do that. You should go ahead and someone else has invented the wheel. Why would I, you know, start chipping away at something? (laughs) Just take their wheel and adapt it, tweak it to your needs. And cite them, you know, if, if, if you're actually, you know, making money for whatever, but yeah, it was. So, it was I think you've got to also try to reciprocate too. So if you do those wonderful things, yeah. you create something new, share it again because you know the, the, the you know the rising tide lifts all boats, as they say. You know all of those things that if you can recontribute and feedback your knowledge and share your knowledge, then you're um, then that's a really powerful thing that you can give back to the community as well. I think that's why the the community automation is is a, a one that's thriving because not only is it bringing value to you and to every day, you can bring value to others and everyone else can learn collectively and there's so many use cases and so many opportunities to get better yeah 100 percent. awesome well i'm 